Hello, everyone. Welcome to our next talk from uh, Tobias Miller and Ludvico Denitz about USB born, USB born attacks. Right, perfect. Hello, hello. Maybe. Perfect. Hello, hello. Is this on? Oh, perfect. Okay. So if there's uh, trouble with the microphone, let me know. So um, I'm Toby. Hello. Don't know if you know me. I am uh, uh, in the GNOME project, and so is Ludovico. I'm Ludovico. Hi. And um, I'm very happy to be here and uh, to be talking to you about, well, the attack surface of USB. How many of you have a device that's capable of having a USB device attached? <laughs> uh, quite a few. There's some who haven't raised their hand. I'm surprised. Like, do you have a computer? <laughs> so, so um, we're um, working on protecting against rogue USB devices. That is, um, Ludovico is doing all the work, and I'm telling him how good he is, and uh, uh, I congratulate him to his achievements. And um, uh, we will present what we think, um, or how we think we should introduce these capabilities of protecting against USB devices such that they actually work in, the, in terms of they unfold their protection capabilities. And what that means, well, you will hopefully see uh, once we have the examples of why we think it doesn't right now. But um, first, let me tell you really quickly why I believe that GNOME is in a very good spot of providing these protection capabilities. So the sole reason of GNOME's, GNOME's existence, as you all know, because we're at FASDEM, is freedom. So GNOME was, uh, well, created as a free alternative, you know, to uh, back in the day proprietary systems. And uh, there's many definitions of freedom, including those, you know, for your free computing. We also believe that you should be free from concerns of your computing being compromised. And we ought to achieve this, well, as well as possible without compromising on your way of using the machine or your usability. Why do I think that we're in a good position? Because it turns out that filtering out extraneous information is the basic function of consciousness. So your brain does nothing else but filtering out all the unnecessary stuff. And I think that with GNOME we found workflows and ways of interacting with the user that prevents, well, unnecessary things and allows the user to concentrate on what, well, they want to do. Because we firmly believe that the user does not sit in front of the computer because they like to sit in front of the computer. I'm sure many of us do. But most people I believe or most people we believe in the GNOME project are sitting in front of their computer because they need to perform a task. And if you interrupt them performing the task, then users go to great length of getting back to their work. So I believe that once you make the user part of your security system, you're going to have a bad time. You must not you know, make the user make decisions that they will regret. And in fact, there have been studies, academic studies, which show that, well, you better throw a coin rather than letting the user decide. You end up with better decisions. So what is the problem about interrupting the user? Well, as I've said, once you distract the user from what they want to achieve, they will want to go back to that. And they click on that button on the lower right because they know that this, this click makes this annoying dialogue disappear. So prompts are dubious in the first place. Security prompts are just wrong. I claim that you must not prompt the user or interrupt the user during their work with a security relevant prompt asking the user something. Worse, if you're making this decision that the user took under stress, permanent, I claim that this is plain evil. You must not do that under any circumstances. If you take one thing away, then it's this. Do not have interactive or user interaction in a way that distracts the user from whatever they're doing and make this decision permanent such you prevent the user from learning how to undo this decision. So don't do this. What do I mean? So I, I've brought a few examples. Um, it's, it's GNOME projects. It's GNOME software. So you know, it's, um, I'm, I'm blaming and shaming, but it's, it's all us anyway. It's, um, this is, uh, you all know this. This connection is untrusted. Do you want to continue anyway? This happens or happened when you opened your chat application. You know, imagine the user. They want to chat. They open the chat application, and they're being asked. You've, all, you've opened this chat, chat application. Do you really want to open? Or rather not? Have you, you know? decided that you, within this 20 milliseconds that I've took to load this dialogue, do you now not want to open the chat application? <laughs> mm. And of, I mean, I, I sympathize with the, with the developers of like, using this user interaction because it's like, a relatively cheap way of alerting the user and you know, pushing off responsibility. But, um, well, I can talk about this at great length, but we don't have time for that. So there's um, another one which I, which I liked. 
your software or this software, this is a package install, like uh, some software ins installation uh, thingy. And it says, it, it tells you that the software you've just downloaded isn't signed and is not trusted by a provider and so on. And we can make sense out of that because we're in the security dev room, you know, we're the experts in the field. But um, I have parents and they, you know, they want to use the computer to send me an email, preferably encryptedly and so on. But um, this uh, is, is gibberish, this doesn't make any sense. Like, wh how, how would they know whether, you know, the software is trusted or not? Like, they don't have any clue. And uh, this is my absolute favorite. It's, um, you know, you get this uh, prompt, and it says, Albert found a new update, which fixes your problem. Please run before submitting the bug. PKCon update dash dash repo dash dash enable. And then, <laughs> yes. What? Like, so it's uh, terrible, right? And um, I, I think we can generalize this into if you have a security system and you require the user to do anything with it, that's fine, but be ready to lose half of the audience, half of your user base, with every single click or keystroke. And um, <laughs> because we're at FASDEM, I thought it'd be funny to show you this. Does anybody remember or know what this is? Yes, key, signing. key signing. Yeah, what do these people do? Like, like, what do they actually do? Yes, they do key signing, but what do they do? Yeah, they like uh, walk along each other and they mumble fingerprints like these hexadecimal numbers and you know it takes ages and it's awful because it's cold because it's February, you know, and like in the middle of Europe it's like cold. And then you get home and then you're not sure what you know what you actually read and so on. <laughs> so it's uh, terrible. And um, well, it's uh, we've also fixed that I, I think. So there's GNOME key sign, but we're not here to talk about GNOME key sign. But that's the mindset, right? They're trying to reduce all this, all these things that security people came up with by something that, well, will hopefully be able uh, to be used by, you know, normal people. So, um, that's the general mindset of why I think, or we think, um, we're in a good position. And now I'm very excited to hear Ludovico talk about the actual USB stuff. So, um, as Toby said, uh, uh, USB devices are uh, everywhere and uh, the users, uh, maybe most of the time, don't think that USB uh, is a threat to their computer. And uh, maybe even uh, the most common uh, scenario is when uh, a user locks his computer, it goes to the bathroom, and uh, it leaves the computer unattended. Uh, in this scenario, the USB uh, ports are still running, so someone can uh, pass by and uh, plug a malicious USB device to the computer. And uh, most of the time, uh, users are not aware of this, and so uh, USB devices can be really dangerous. For example, uh, um, just... Uh, the uh, recent uh, screenshot of the CV list uh, for USB uh, re us related to USB, uh, it's mo uh, has more than uh, 200 uh, entries. And uh, the most famous uh, attack to uh, USB, using USB uh, device uh, is uh, the bad USB, where uh, uh, malicious device, uh, it's, uh, just, it was just a pen drive, but uh, it also advertised itself uh, as a keyboard, so when you plug this device in, uh, it can uh, uh, act as a keyboard and uh, enter keystrokes automatically. So this is uh, a CV that uh, we tried to demo, and uh, this is a VM of Ubuntu 14.04, because the CV is uh, two years old. And um, just using a specially crafted uh, uh, USB device uh, like this, it's uh, an Arduino Leonardo clone. Uh, it uh, um, advertises itself as a MIDI keyboard that uh, has a bug in this uh, particular uh, kernel version, and uh, just plugging this device uh, in this computer, it will uh, create a kernel panic. Um, this can also be exploited to gain a root shell in this computer. So in this case, it just, it's just a kernel panic, but it can be even worse. From a MIDI keyboard. When's the last time you've attached a MIDI keyboard? <laughs> So the, any USB device has the privilege of loading any kernel driver that you've installed on your system. Turns out that if you have a general purpose distribution, well, then you have all the drivers that have ever been written for Linux. 
ever. Uh, and it turns out that this is quite a large code base. Your tech service is very large in this case. Yeah, that's right. And uh, what uh, other people already did to mitigate this uh, USB problem? Well, um, for example, in Windows, there is uh, Kaspersky that uh, lets you enable USB protection. Uh, and every time you plug a new device, uh, you'll get this prompt with a pin that you need to enter uh, with the newly plugged uh, device. And uh, it's a uh, confirmation that uh, uh, you are uh, uh, willingly plugging a keyboard or uh, a mouse in your computer. Um, this is a USB guard. It's, uh, uh, this is the uh, UI of USB guard. Um, it lists all the currently plugged in uh, USB devices, uh, and uh, uh, it says if they are allowed or, uh, or blocked in the current state. And uh, this is the related uh, uh, setting page of uh, USB guard. Uh, where you can uh, set the default action for new USB devices uh, and uh, the timeout and uh, other stuff. Uh, in practice, when you plug a new device, uh, you get uh, this uh, pop-up right here. Um, it has a bunch of uh, numbers and letters. Uh, uh, it says uh, the serial number, the name of the device, uh, this is the USB class, uh, and you have uh, 23 seconds to decide if you want to allow it or block. And uh, if you don't act uh, in this 23 seconds, this pop-up will go away, and uh, you have this USB device that will not work. Um, this is uh, USB guard GNOME. It's a better attempt to managing USB protection. Uh, it still lists all the USB devices that you have. And uh, when you plug a new device, you'll get a notification better integrated in the system with the allow or block button. Um, uh, but uh, still, in this case, uh, the user needs to decide what to do. And uh, also, if you don't uh, press any of these two buttons uh, in a maybe five, 10 seconds, uh, this notification will go away and uh, you will not be able to see these uh, buttons uh, anymore. Is this the last question? Sure, can you go back to the previous slide? Yeah. You can select allow or block with the keyboard. If I plug in a USB device, which this, uh, includes a keyboard driver, which already does allow for you. The um, uh, new I plug. Yeah, yeah. The, the new plugged in device uh, is blocked until you press allow. So the so if I plug in a, a keyboard, a runtime, I cannot allow it because the keyboard so doesn't If you right. don't have any, any other uh, in a mouse or we keyboards already connected, you cannot. So malicious device already inside, or connected to the computer when you turn it on, is accepted. If they are authorized at boot time, yes. So for the internet, there have been many comments around whether this dialogue now could be used from this malicious keyboard that you've just plugged in. So the, the, the answer is we get back to that in a few slides. So. The thing is that you can clone, clone a USB device. So if, if there is any rule that allows right, right. some kind of uh, USB device with a specific serial number, you just clone it and it is allowed by default. You don't see uh, this pop-up and you can play with it. Yeah, this is are, are just the numbers uh, advertised by the device itself, so you can uh, clone them and uh, uh, if you know that a particular device is already authorized, uh, you can uh, uh, clone this, uh, the d device with yours. So uh, then we go here, where um, uh, even just installing USB guard with uh, its uh, UI, uh, a bunch of users uh, completely blocked its, th their self from it's the It's very secure. <laughs> from the system. Yeah, in this case, uh, they are. Uh, completely protected from malicious USB devices. <laughs> so our attempt here is uh, the, we have a few uh, takeaways here. And the first one is uh, that we don't want to lock users f out from their system. And um, we tried an approach uh, where is uh, uh, that we uh, incrementally um, build the protection. 
Uh, so we started from a sim simple cases and then we grow, grew it up. Um, for example, the first step was a switch on off where you can uh, disable all new USB devices. Uh, and uh, this was uh, related to a simple uh, use case where the user maybe uh, they They'll go, they, they want to go for a travel, and uh, so they bring their laptop with them, and they want to be secure against uh, uh, USB devices that some user may plug uh, in uh, their laptop, so they just turn on the protection and uh, no USB devices will be allowed. Um, then a uh, more smarter um, uh, protection, it's uh, while lock screen is on. In this case, uh, uh, if the lock screen of your computer is on, then no USB devices will be allowed. If the lock screen is off, then you can plug new USB devices. And this is because if your lock screen is on, maybe it's because you are not in front of your computer, so you don't want to plug new devices. And the first step that is still a work in progress is to treat differently the keyboards because um, they are uh, one of the category more dangerous uh, of USB because uh, you can plug a keyboard that automatically inputs uh, uh, some keystrokes on your belief. So this is uh, uh, how we present uh, our functionality. Um, this was a concept where in the GNOME control center in the privacy tab we added this uh, disallow new USB devices uh, row. And uh, it had a simple uh, on-off switch. And uh, we're being hacked. Someone disallowed the USB device. <laughs> <laughs> the second attempt uh, for the scenario, we had uh, this uh, drop-down menu with uh, where you can select the protection level that you want. This is uh, like always protect or uh, only when the lock screen is uh, uh, locked. And uh, this is uh, how it currently works. So it's, uh, okay, it works. Uh, we have this uh, on-off switch, and then you can select the uh, protection level that you want uh, for your USB devices. And um, it also checks the, because we, uh, in the back end, we use a USB guard, so uh, it checks uh, if USB guard is currently available uh, in your system, and uh, if it's not, uh, then you, are, you cannot uh, turn on the protection. Uh, we also show um, an icon in the top bar, uh, letting the user know that the USB protection is currently uh, active. And uh, also in this case, uh, if USB guard is not available or the protection is not active, we don't show the icon. And uh, this is a recap, I don't know if uh, you can see this, um, of what happens when you plug a new device uh, in your computer. <laughs> if the USB protection is disabled, then you, the device will be authorized or uh, uh, it will, uh, for example, if you, if you have USB guard installed and uh, manually configured or use a third party uh, UI for USB guard, then uh, uh, from the GNOME standpoint, we don't, uh, we don't uh, block this device. Uh, we let the user uh, do what they configured in, your, in their system. If the USB protection is on, then uh, we, as GNOME, are the one that manage uh, the USB guard uh, configuration. So if the protection is never blocked, then we manually authorize the devices, new devices that, that are plugged in uh, the system. If uh, you have a block with lock screen, then uh, we check if the lock screen is uh, active. Is, if uh, the lock screen is not active, then we authorize the device. If the lock screen is active, we added this uh, extra check about uh, keyboards, and uh, we check if the plugged device is a keyboard, because um, if, uh, for example, your main keyboard breaks and you have the protection enabled, then uh, you are unable to plug new 
uh, a new keyboard in your system and you're basically locked out of your system. Yeah. So in this check, uh, we uh, control if the keyboard uh, that you are trying to plug is the only available keyboard in your system. Uh, if it is, uh, then we authorize the keyboard even if uh, the protection was uh, active. Um, this is uh, mm, mainly a choice. We, we, we choose that because uh, we, uh, we are willing to compromise uh, a bit of security in, uh, in favor of a more uh, usable system. Uh, okay, this is the... Right, so notice how we've tried very hard to not ask the user about whether they want to have this device attached. <laughs> we try to infer the, uh, the intent of the user uh, by, you know, by other means that we have available as the session, for example, the lock screen. And um, we hope that this provides better protection overall, knowing that users will know the security solution without maybe even knowing that it exists because it just works, you know. And um, we haven't finished, like it, this is all work in progress, right? So if you have like comments or ideas, then now is the perfect moment because we're just right now in the process of, uh, well, uh, letting all bits and pieces fall in place so that this works. So if you have ideas as to, you know, what else uh, needs to be done or should be done, then we're, we're all ears in, uh, in for taking comments regarding what to do. I think the, um, the most prominent attack that we've seen, this bad use beast of, we're trying to be clever about this uh, and uh, try to swallow the keys that are not, or that we consider to be dangerous. So a keyboard, well, can press all like sorts of keys, right? And um, we somehow need to deal with a keyboard pressing, say, uh, Alt F2 and then R or something, because we, we wouldn't want a, you know, a malicious keyboard to steal our Minesweeper high score or whatever. So um, uh, we're in the progress of writing this, this code and getting, getting the infrastructure in place to uh, well, detect whether keystrokes have come from a keyboard that we are not well, fully trusting yet, maybe. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is all being developed right now as we speak. So again, if you have comments uh, around this, please you know, approach us. And let me just finish up uh, this last slide. We have... Um, other things uh, that we, we have on the horizon, the most important one probably being the USB Type-C authentication. So there is a, in the standard is a, a way for USB devices to, well, to be authenticated. So in the future, USB devices will have private keys and certificates, and then you, know, you can ask the device whether it really is that device that you think it is, and um, for better or worse. Uh, I don't see how it currently would work in Linux, so we we'll have to deal with this situation eventually. And, broken by design. well, sort of, like there's uh, Thunderbolt as well. It's uh, very, you could argue that it's very similar in <laughs> what it does and uh, how it works, so we might uh, sort of uh, touch base with, uh, with the th Thunderbolt stuff and reuse things and bits and pieces from there. <laughs> Another uh, bigger problem is that we if we wanted to eventually ramp up protection capabilities. As uh, we've mentioned, we want to start slowly and then incrementally build up our protection uh, capabilities. And one thing we don't know yet how to do properly is the early boot phase, like before our stuff even runs. Uh, that's a bit you know, unknown how to do that. Uh, yeah, with that, I think we're ready to close and take questions. And first, we'd like to thank you for your attention. And then we're happy to discuss, now or later, of course. <laughs>